Hola, familia de humanidad. Hello, familia de humanity. Salud, la familia. It's 5.25 a.m. And I'm about to go to Yachiklang and Bonampak. Come with me. I decided to go with a colectivo. Like this guy. Because Yachiklan and Bonampak is 3 hours and 30 minutes from here, from Palenque. So I didn't want to do like 7 hours of motorcycle in one day or two days. Because either way, I need to come back here in Palenque and then go the other direction, closer to the Caribbean coast. Because next, it's either Pomona or I go directly to Calakmul. All right, let's go visit those sites. Vámonos. We just arrived, I'm your brother Wallace and I'm about to show you Yachica.
वेलकम टू याचिका Yachiklan is an ancient Maya city located on the bank of the Usmacinta River in the state of Chiapas, Mexico. Origins are from the pre-classic period. It was one of the most powerful Maya city in the late classic, like Tikal and Palenque, with its major rival being Piedras Negras at 40 kilometers away on the other side of the border of Guatemala. Yachiclan also dominated control the site of Bonampak. This is another site that we are going to visit right after this one because it's only 21 kilometers away. But it, it's much smaller than Yachiklan. Researchers believe that the original name was Pachahan, meaning broken sky. A large part of what is known today about Yachitlang comes from the hieroglyphic texts of the king who ruled during its late classic apogee. The stairway number one at this site is the most important, with the most information to know what was happening during that time. Stick with me here because we are about to witness some awesome details. Pretty hot. 
So in my whole group, we were around 9 to 10 people. Nobody went there. But look at this. You had to look up when you are in those little doorway, we could say. And look at how beautiful this is. The condition of those glyph is magnificent. It's incredible, those little details. And it's not the only one, there's three of them. But this one has a lot of details in good condition. You can see how they were dressed, the shoes they were wearing. And if I was more knowledgeable of the script of the Maya, I could tell you what was written. But most of the time, it was a date and an event corresponding to a king. Now let's go to the other one. Look at this. Oh, wow. I'm still looking at this today, editing this video, and I'm still amazed by the condition. This is the original. There's no renovation on this. This is maravilloso. Wow. Incredible. I really wanted to have a closer look at all the details and just immerse myself in the artist that created this and try to see if there's some glyph that I could understand because I know just a couple symbols but I wasn't able to do so. I was really really grateful at this moment to be there alone in this Acropolis. Only two other people passed by and they went away right away. And look at those. Those were bowls probably to bring to powder, to smash some rocks, some ingredients. And then they would have another rock that they would use manually to crush what they wanted to have in the powder form.
The Incas are well known for their water irrigation knowledge, but from my understanding and now I could say experience, I've been to many sites in Guatemala and in Mexico. The Maya were really good too. So this, what we are seeing here, was probably used for water irrigation. Where was it placed exactly? I don't know, but this is really, really heavy. So I'm going to show you guys how they do the process of excavation. From the beginning, when they find the site, I don't know if they really found the site, and then they see, oh, this is for sure a temple or a pyramid that's excavated. So let me show you. It's really hot out here. So the building or the temple in its original form. So this is how the archaeologists found this palace, or this temple. Then the process of excavation. You see they remove a lot of plants, dirt, trees, roots. Now they are inside. And then the final touch, the details. And it looks like this. And after that, it looks like this. And in the now moment, it looks like this. Or maybe it was <laughs> that one on the other side. I don't know which one is structure for the three. All right, so done with the East Plaza. It's like a really small plaza. Now let's get to the Grand Plaza, the main one. I need to get back down this hill, sweat a little bit more for you guys and then get there. Vamonos! Hasta pronto. Last temple before I leave this East Plaza. It's Temple 42. Let me show you. Wow! There's a beautiful linto. I don't know how to say this in Spanish or English. In French it's a linto with a big stone and then you can tell there was a roof. This is new, new stucco on it. Monkeys looking at me. Come on up. There's two people, maybe even three, maybe a baby.
Okay, now we are back at the the two way. Can we call it the two way? Yeah, the split way, where we split, where we decide either we go at the Pequeña Acropolis or at the Grand Acropolis. So now we're going at the Grand Acropolis. I'm like crazy, and the mosquitoes are loving it. So we were right here. Now we are going right here and probably this one is following. You see? Right here, we went there. Woo! I didn't know we could go there. So I came back, I'm going to the Gran Acropolis, going like this. That's that, and then coming back. Yachiclan reached its greatest power during the reign of King Itzamnaj Balam II, who died in his 90s in 742 AD. This site is well known for its well-preserved lintels set above the doorway. These lintels plus the stelas erected before the major building describe the dynastic history of the city. So remember the lentils that we saw in the small Acropolis with all the details where I went in the doorway and I filmed over me. Those are the lentils that they are talking about. And they describe the dynastic history of the city of Yachiclan. Now I'm entering this place that we are not supposed to go to because to me it doesn't make sense. So I went there with good intentions just to visit and suddenly when I went inside I saw all the details but it was really humid and a really weird smell and then lots of bats everywhere. It was really, really dark deep inside, so I decided to just go back, but at least I saw a part of what they didn't want us to see. It was like a underground palace under the city. There's so many bats in there, and it stinks. So, I just won't go. Right? I just won't go. Never been there. <laughs> this is the one we saw from the water, now we are in the Gran Plaza. Here we can see something very interesting. Those are some woman ruler. Many woman ruler were depicted in Yachiclan. Over 120 inscriptions have been identified on various monuments at the site. In 808 AD, the king Kinich 
Tabu Skol 3 marked his capture of the last king of Piedras Negras, overthrowing and destroying the city as a capital. So some of you might know, but the Mayans were giving blood in a ritual or a ceremonial purposes for certain gods in order to be grateful for all the protection and all the rain and every elements. So the priest, um, masculine priest, were giving blood by their penis. They were. Uh, stabbing their penis with a, a spine of a certain fish I don't remember the name in English and the woman was by the, the thong they were pursing it and then passing passing <laughs> passing, <laughs> passing a rope with spike on it and then the blood would go on a paper and then in the ritual they would burn the paper so the blood would ascend to the sky to honor their gods. So let me show you a, st a stila, or it's probably not a stila, it was a glyph in a certain temple here. They say it's lintel 24. Let me show you. So here you see the masculine priest or king or god, ruler, leader. And here you see the woman. So she stab her thong. This is a rope. This is some spike. So she pass it through there. Then the blood would drip on it. Go into a book that contains paper. And this is their representation of blood. And eventually they would burn that paper. To honor their gods. This is what the mainstream say. I don't know. Is it true? You tell me. You tell me. Let's continue the visit. Wow, there's so many lentils. Hasta pronto.
Now, use your imagination a little bit. This temple was all painted in red from a paint made from cinnabar. Those sculptures were perfectly carved with millions of details and that guy sitting on the throne on the top was in perfect shape. All right, just finished the visit of Yachiklang. It was quick because I'm with a group, right? So uh, we have a time limit. So uh, I had to run back. I wasn't done. I had more shots to get, but uh, we'll work with what we have. And um, now going to Panampak and enjoying the wind in my face because I'm super sweaty. <laughs> so family of humanity, family humanity, la famille de l'humanité. Stay awesome, stay blessed, spread love, seek knowledge. I'll see you in Bonampak in uh, maybe 30 minutes. <laughs> stay awesome. Woo. So on the way back, we saw this friend. Really nice. Really peaceful friend. Hola, hermano. Oh, hermana. No sé. Sé. <laughs> 